Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another video. Um, not a cooking video at the minute, I'm just going to run through um, what I use for my um, pizza oven and what I have been using. <coughs> uh, about three years ago I decided I was going to build an oven for myself, just one of these uh, gym ball type ovens. But when I started trying to do it, it worked. It's try to pack the concrete refractory cement up against the, the gym ball, which was a method that most people were doing. I couldn't compact it against the gym ball because it was flexing so much. <clears throat> so the dome almost felt as if it was quite light and airy and it, I wanted it compact more. So basically what I did was I still used the gym ball but I covered it with um, fiberglass to give myself a, uh, a solid dome to work off. So just run through this video. So basically this is uh, this is my base. This is for a 36 inch oven. I build a, I've got a kit for a 28 inch oven as well but this is for the 36. <coughs> so basically it's 105 centimetres from the front of the oven to the rear of the inside of the oven. And 92 centimetres across, so basically 36 inch internal diameter, <coughs> which is a fairly big oven. Anything bigger than 36 you would usually uh, build using brick. Now, this is the mould I built off a gym ball for uh, the smaller 28 inch oven. Now it's got the ridge on it there, going down the middle, so that I can build the, the dome in two halves. Um, just makes it a lot easier to lift and carry and this is the 36 inch one I've built that in three sections um, now there's quite a big difference between the two you wouldn't think that but the internal capacity is, is massive so this is three sections and um, an opening for a 6 inch um, chimney flue So it's about two or three millimetres thick um, fiberglass, so it's it's solid, and uh, the the mould itself weighs about 10-15 kilos. Now this is the mix going on the back section. Now it's a mixture of perlite, sharp sand, and refractory cement. So you cover the section with um, cling film, and then put the mix on halfway up, any higher it's too heavy, it will start to collapse at the bottom. So you just do it halfway up <coughs> and then you can basically compact it against the dome so it becomes quite a solid, dense structure. The cling film is just there to stop anything sticking to the, the fibre glass, just makes it a lot easier to come off. <clears throat> and this is a left hand section. Again exactly the same, covered in cling film. Same mix, it's four parts uh, perlite, one part sharp sand and one part refractory cement. Again because you can compact it against the hard dome you can get quite a nice shape out of it. Over the last three years, I've built about 12, well, 35, 40 of the smaller 28 inch ovens. This is the first 36 inch oven I've made. Somebody actually asked me for one. I made the mould about a year ago and just never got around to using it. But then somebody actually seen it and said, well, can I get your first one? So this is it. As you can see there, it's roughly three inches thick all the way around. Thicker in some places. But the ridges that split it into the sections, I've made them a specific height. So as long as I keep to them, uh, I can generally keep the, the thickness three inches all the way around. This is it removed off the dome. <coughs> it's actually a very big section. It weighs probably 35, 40 kilos, maybe even more. It's a heavy bit of, uh, heavy bit of kit, but it's... Uh, 
still a lot lighter than the equivalent brick version. Now this is the uh, the right hand section, again exactly the same as the left. Built up halfway, let it dry overnight, and then put the top half on so as uh, it doesn't collapse. Now the refractory cement I use uh, dries in 12 hours, 18 hours. Very good stuff. Very expensive, but there's no seven day, ten day waiting period. I can get the get the section done and then get it off the next day. So this is a completed rear section. And this is it off the dome. Or off the mould I should say. Comes off really easy with the, the cling film on there. <coughs> so thickness is maintained rough, you know, three inches or more all the way through. And mixing the sharp sand with the perlite um, gives it a bit of density, gives it a bit of weight. And the fact that I can compact it tighter, it, um, it helps. Now what I usually do is cover it with a very thin render coat just to make it look a bit nicer. So it's four parts sand, one part cement. <coughs> but I mix in some uh, accelerator and frost proofer. Um, just to help the render out. Usually if somebody buys this kit off me, they're going to finish it off with wrapping it in insulation and then doing a render coat on the, on the outside of that, the normal way you would finish a <coughs> an oven off. But sometimes they can leave it sitting in their garden for a week or two or a couple of weeks or maybe even longer until they get round to actually finishing the oven off. So if I put this stuff on the outside, it gives it a bit, um, gives it a bit of protection. And I basically just apply it using my hands. Got a nice thick pair of rubber gloves on. And then splat it all over, wiping it in, rubbing it into all the uh, little nooks and crannies so you get that nice smooth coat on the outside. It's not a, a an over the top functional render coat, it's more of a sort of beauty coat just to make it look nice and give the uh, the perlite mix a bit of a bit of protection if it's sitting outside in the weather <coughs> until the dome's actually finished. But all uh, all three sections will get this treatment. Doesn't take that long to do. Seems a bit time consuming, but you can generally do the whole oven, the three sections, in uh, probably about an hour, maybe just less. So this is that complete. As you can see, all the three sections have got a nice little render coat on them. The one on the inside is darker because that's still to dry off. <coughs> and it gets a nice simple uh, stainless steel door. Nice big hole there. It's about six inches just over. So it allows for any variation in the, uh, in the flue you want to use. <coughs> but all, the, all three sections fit together quite nicely so by the time you put some uh, high temperature cement in there um, it's good to go. Again this is just some other pictures of the, uh, the actual dome itself with the uh, refractory cement on it. Again, generally when you use a, a mould like this, you tend to get a bit more uh, consistency um, with the ovens that come off. Instead of them being vastly different, they, they tend to come off almost uh, exactly the same. So say three inches again, so it's, as long as I measure it every four or five inches in vertical height, <coughs> And I don't go past the ridges. Um, it, 
it tends to stay the, the same sort of height all the way through, so it's uh, quite consistent. And this is the uh, the left hand section off. Again, th this is before the renders actually applied. <coughs> And this is just the uh, the right hand section there on the the dome again on the the fiberglass dome. So you can actually see that until it fully dries, you can still see the join between the bottom section that's put on first and the top section. <coughs> you know the the fiberglass dome is built in exactly the same way, using the gym ball as you'd build the oven. Only instead of covering it with uh, cling film and then putting your concrete straight onto the um, the gym ball, you're putting your fiberglass over your mould that you've made using the gym ball. So it's, everything's exactly the same. It's just you're using fiberglass. Um, now to make to make both domes, um, they're they're not cheap to make. Uh, I think the small one probably cost about a hundred pound in materials, and the thirty-six inch one probably hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty. So, not far off three hundred pound in materials, um, just to make the two moulds. So you've got a few ovens you need to make before you actually break even on the um, on the materials. Again, just another render mix. Four sand, plaster of sand if you can get it. If not, builder sand's fine. And then some waterproofer and accelerator just to help it dry. <coughs> it's strange because the um, the refractory mix for the dome can be dry and ready to take off the mold in less than you know 24 hours. But at that point, the render's still wet. It, that takes anywhere up to three days. Because uh, you're using standard uh, cement, the uh, refractory cement, although it's expensive, it's fifty, so anywhere between forty-five and fifty pound for a bag. Uh, it does, it, it's worth it in the end. I you know it's rated to uh, 1,400 degrees centigrade, so you know two and a half thousand degrees Fahrenheit. So it's well, it's well worth the additional expense. I know um, a lot of people make these ovens using Portland cement, but I've also seen a lot of people have issues um, with cracking, uh, flaking inside. Um, you have to be very wary using Portland cement as well. With, um, on the curing process, you need to give it 28 days to fully cure before you even think about putting small fires in. Um, which is all well and good, you know, £5 for a bag of Portland cement or £50 for a bag of refractory cement. If you're on a tight budget and you want to build your oven for um, you know, less than £100 then normal uh, Portland cement is the way to go. But um, I build these ovens to sell so I've got to make sure they're up to a, a specific standard. <coughs> and using full-blown refractory cement is the uh, the only way you can guarantee the longevity of the oven. Now, I've had mine for three years now, um, and internally, not a crack to be seen anywhere. Um, I'll get some videos up of uh, my actual oven anyway when I start using it when the weather picks up. Um, but yeah, use, using the right stuff, it, it helps helps make the, the ovens last longer. Now, basically there you go. That's the uh, the oven itself. Now, this section here, as you're filling it in with the um, the render, <coughs> you see the lumps and that that appear. That's just some of the uh, external perlite that hasn't fully adhered to the concrete or in the cement mix, refractory cement mix, just comes off as you as you're manually rubbing it in. It's not a problem. After uh, a couple hours, it, it dries off a bit, so if you just use a little hand brush, 
um, you can brush it smooth uh, and you'll lose all those um, all those little bumps and anything else that's on there but that's that's the 36 inch oven um, only ever done one sent it down to uh, a client uh, about a week ago and sure as shit the very first one I've sent down there it turns up um, broken now it's not a major issue but if you can see where the mouse is it basically cracked down there so this little section here it broke now I was very careful on how I packaged it lots of bubble wrap and cardboard so to me it's been damaged during transit someone's stood on the on the pallet it was on or someone's hit it and it's it's a straight crack and it's came off now I did offer um, to take the oven back but he was more than happy to keep it and basically just glue that back on as if it was another section it's easily done I've, I've had a few clients before that have um, bought smaller ovens and uh, when they've been trying to lift them up into place they've dropped them and they've cracked or they've broken sections off it's easy enough just to cement them back together if you use the, the correct high temperature cement so there's no issues there but yeah only ever done one of these I've done about 40 of the smaller ones the smaller ones come with a, a base uh, a 3 inch base that they sit on but obviously this one would just be, be too big too heavy I struggled trying to get this one on the pallet actually um, things you don't think about when you build these sort of things you know where is it going to fit on a pallet but uh, you live and learn so there you go folks um, not a full blown how to video but just giving you an idea of what you can actually do instead of using your gym ball you can use a gym ball to get you started cover it with fiberglass and then you have a, a permanent structure you can also use sand you can pile sand up into the shape you want get some cement in a bucket make it a really watery mix dip newspaper into the cement mixture and then put that over your sand and then within a day or two that cement drenched paper will have hardened um, not quite as hard as concrete but it would have hardened and that's, that's another structure you can then build your uh, your pizza oven over loads of different ways to do it this is just the way I decided to do it as I was going to build uh, more than one uh, I thought I'd, I'd try and get something a bit more robust um, so there you go hopefully this has given you some uh, useful information as I say I'll, uh, I'm sorting out my own oven at the moment uh, it's just been uh, well not been used over the winter months and it's with the weather starting to get a bit better now uh, I need to get it cleaned out, a few curing fires in it again just to dry anything out. <coughs> uh, so hopefully a few videos coming up with that in the next week or two. But uh, other than that, thanks for watching.